the new prime minister is being hailed as something of a hero for doing what he's doing. But what I think he is doing is, is I think he has lit the fuse on their bond market. And the reason I say that is something to the tune of 92% of all Japanese government bonds that have been issued are held within Japan. They're held by the life insurance companies. They're held by the pension funds. They're held by the individuals. They're held by the banks by law, which I think is kind of funny. But So all these bonds are sitting out there. If I'm an institution, and guess what? There is an institution out there. It happens to be the largest pension fund in the world. The manager of that pension fund, which is Japanese government pension pension fund manager, he's sitting there and he's got 67% of his asset allocation in Japanese government bonds. Well, if they are devaluing the currency, which, which Shinzo Abe has been very clear that that's what he wants to do, and, and as you see, the charts on the yen, the, the yen has weakened a little bit. But if I'm sitting there holding those bonds, those bonds have two primary enemies. Number one is inflation, and number two is currency devaluation. Well, last time I checked, the new prime minister has made an inflation target of 2%. I just said that the interest, the, the interest rate on the 10-year bond in Japan is 0.75%. Why would anyone want to own a yield, a 10-year bond yielding 0.75 if you've got inflation of 2%? No way. One of the reasons that the Japanese have been willing to hold on to this because they have been in a deflationary environment. So if you've got deflation of 2% and you've got a 0.75 yielding bond, all right, well, that, that, that you're going to get a real yield there of, say, 2.75. Okay, fine. I'll go along with that, and, and, and I'll sit with it. So, sorry, nominal yield. So if this inflation target, number one, if there, I just said that, that bond markets have these two enemies, which is inflation and currency devaluation. Well, that's exactly what he set out to do. Well, lo and behold, that fund manager who's managing their pension fund, and he's got a 67% asset allocation in JGBs, they came out, and there's an article right in Reuters where they interviewed him, and he said, well, if we manage to get 2% inflation, I'm going to have to reduce my asset allocation in JGBs, in Japanese government bonds. Well, isn't that the whole point here? So you've got a prime minister who I think is trying, he's not trying to do it, I just think that that's a, that's a natural side effect, if he gets what he wants and he gets severe currency devaluation, and if he gets his inflation, then that's what sets off their debt bomb. Now, how, does, how is this going to look when it plays out? So needless to say, I've stayed up nights worrying about this and, and trying to play it out and, and strategize and that sort of thing. And I'll get into some of the specifics of what I'm doing in, my, in the product that I manage in the CTA. I'll get into the specifics in a second. But the way I think this is going to play out is, is that what really accelerates the yen weakness is when interest rates start going up. Because guess what? The Japanese can't afford for interest rates to go up. So they are going to defend their mar bond market with all of their might. And that is, that, that's when you get a, the, right now you're, you're, you're getting a, a, um, a, an orderly devaluation because they're trying to, trying, to, trying to do it. The way you get a disorderly devaluation of the currency is when they come in, they say, well, the bond market's headed lower. We've got to support it. So then they go print an unlimited amount of yen. But guess what? What a lot of people think is, is that when you come to a crossroads that you say, well, I'm either going to choose a debt crisis or I'm going to choose a currency crisis. Guess what? That one of them causes the other. If you go look at Reinhardt uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff's work, th this is how this works throughout hi history, is that a currency crisis sets off a debt crisis, a debt crisis sets off a currency crisis, because they're going to do everything they can to possibly defend it. So that's when I think that they really lose that, uh, the, the, and you get into the disorderly move in the end, is when interest rates start kicking up.